snow and, and you've encountered it. And today I, I have the pleasure of having someone bring you a message that I know is on time for God, for you ladies, for this time. I've got a young lady here, you see there in your bulletin, Stephanie French, or Stephanie, go ahead and come on up here. Stephanie uh, is one of my former youth, and uh, when she was growing up, she did, she'd tell me, I ain't never doing nothing in church, Pastor. I ain't doing none of that. I ain't been through that. I ain't going to do that. Well, God makes things happen in mysterious and sometimes not so pleasant ways. I'm not going to tell her whole story, but at 17 years old, we had been their youth pastors for a month, and they were in a horrific accident right out here between uh, Tyler on Highway 31, and she lost her mom that day. And uh, she had uh, broken pelvis, everything was messed up. She went through a lot. Um, she's gone through a lot as a mom. And uh, I believe she's got a word for you today. So I just want to welcome you, Stephanie French. Oh my gosh, you're going to make me tear up before I even get started. Thanks. All right, let me get situated here, guys. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Mike and Becca, for asking me to come here today. Um, it seems like yesterday I was in his youth group, so this is absolutely nuts. And Kylie was actually a newborn baby right after the wreck happened. Uh, and now to see this beautiful young lady up here singing and leading worship, it just makes me feel really old, to be honest. <laughs> but um, whenever, I'm going to be honest with you guys this morning. Well, first of all, happy Mother's Day. And like he said, sometimes it's not the easiest day for us. Whenever he first asked me to come and speak and on Mother's Day of all days, knowing my story, I was about ready to kill him. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I hate Mother's Day. <laughs> like, I know I'm a mother and I love my two beautiful babies. We've got Jude and Izzy. They're gifts from God. But Mother's Day still has that sting of grief that comes along with it. It's like a slap in the face every single time um, that, that rolls around that I don't have my mom with me. And maybe you guys are feeling like that. Maybe you've lost your mom, like he said, or Maybe you want so bad to be a mother and that hasn't happened or miscarriages or loss of children. I can't even imagine that grief. But God's near the brokenhearted and he has come to comfort us today. And so I'm just thankful that um, he's chased me down. Then come after me and chase my butt down and that I'm here with you guys today only by his grace and love. So after I like, he's Pastor Mike can be very persuasive, okay? Let's just be honest. And whenever he called and asked me, I kind of blindly said, sure. And then the minute I hung the phone up, I went to my husband. I was like, babe, I just did a thing. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not a preacher. And like Satan began to attack me with all these lies. Like, I don't know if you've ever been attacked by lies from the enemy, but I sure have. And he threw all these things in my face. Like, what do you have to speak to these women about? Like, you know, you're going to get up there and make a fool out of yourself, out of your family, embarrass everybody, embarrass Pastor Mike. You're no preacher. Like, he was just attacking me. Pretty, And I texted him, no joke, and I'm like, forget it. I'm out. You better hurry up and start preparing your Sunday sermon because I cannot do this. And then I had some friends in my life and some people so filled with Jesus that they began to speak truth in, in over me and said, it's not you, but it's God. And he's prepared you for the past 15 years for this and for you to step out because I've been running from him and from this purpose for the past 15 years. And he's like, it's time, girl. So even though Satan came at me with all these lies, I decided, okay, Lord, like your truth is going to outweigh all of that and I'm going to do it. But you better be with me and you got to give the words to speak to them. So as I'm literally, I'm thinking Mother's Day, you immediately go to Proverbs 31, right? I mean, the virtuous woman, let's talk about that. So I go, have you read that lately? Like, maybe all y'all are way better than me. But I went and I read Proverbs 31, y'all. It jacked me up. I was like, oh, my goodness. My kids are not dressed in scarlet. My husband does not praise me in the city. You need to get to, 
you need to get to getting on that one. Like, uh, they do not rise and call me blessed. I barely can drag their tushies out of bed, and then they're surely not calling me blessed. And so I was like, oh, my goodness, I have nothing in common with this woman. How am I about to preach on it? And so I get to the part where it says she goes afar to get their food. Oh, praise the Lord, that is me. Because sometimes if I don't have nothing to cook, I drive all the way across town to the Chick-fil-A, and then I bring things back, and I'm like, I can relate to her on that. I got you, Proverbs 31 woman. So no joke, and I'm a hot mess, so y'all just follow me here. I have a shirt, literally, that says somewhere between Proverbs 31 and 90s hip-hop, okay? Most days, I'm a little closer to the 90s hip-hop, but I'm trying to get to the Proverbs 31. So I'm like, Lord, if that's not where you're leading me, where are you leading me? And he's like, you know all those lies that Satan's been filling your mind with? There's women, and there's men, and there's young, and there's old. They're sitting there today in that church in Lufkin, Texas, that they've been beat down by the lies of the enemy. And that's what I want you to call out. I want you to call him for what he is. And so the name of my sermon today is Liar, Liar, Pants on Fire. I don't know about y'all, but that's what we used to say when people were lying to us when we were little. You're just liar, liar, pants on fire. And there is nothing more. You can ask my husband and my two children. I have some grace, okay? I am patient most of the time, and I let them get by with way too much, even my husband. But but when it comes to a lie, there is nothing I hate more than a liar. Like, they know I do not tolerate a lie. I'll tolerate a lot, but don't you lie to me. And But the Lord's like, as I'm preparing this, well, then why do you let your enemy lie to you all the time? Like, you don't tolerate a lie from people. You don't tolerate a lie from your husband and from your children. But you tolerate a lie from your enemy on a daily basis. And it's time for us to stand up and start fighting. And how do we fight back a lie? Well, with the truth, of course. So let's start off by looking at the devil is a lie, literally. So look at John 8 and 44. Let's see who he is. It says, he has nothing to do with the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. So right there, that's his character. It's what he does. He lies. And so we're going to look today at four. There's a lot of lies that he could be attacking you with. But I feel like the Holy Spirit gave me four specific lies to go over this morning. They're ones that hit close to home for me. And I'm sure that he has a specific word for you guys too. The first lie the enemy likes to come at me and I'm sure you guys with is that you can't trust anybody but yourself. Like, I got to have my own back. We have tried so hard to raise our children. In this world, it seems like the generations that coming up, like my kids and their age, I see, like, you know, you do you. Like, you got to have it for yourself. Ain't nobody has your back except you. Don't trust no man. Don't trust. Well, exactly. We don't put our trust in man. But what we've done is sometimes we get these cute little memes that we, I don't know if any of y'all have social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. But you scroll through people's stories and you see all these motivational quotes all the time. Well, sometimes we're so biblically, maybe I'm just preaching to myself, but I'm so biblically illiterate at times that you start to take that on as truth. We think that cute little meme is gospel. And many times it has no biblical truth whatsoever. It just sounds good. And so I was going through preparing for this. And here's just a few that I saw. The only person looking out for me is me. I know you've heard that before. The best place to find a helping hand is at the end of your own arm. And then there's, if you're still searching for the one who will change your life, why don't you look in the mirror? Well, why don't we look to the cross? Because that's the person that changed my life. And that's the one, the only one that can change yours. And so our poor kids, you've got a generation of kids that are stressed out and they're anxiety ridden and they're on depression meds at like three and four and five years old. And it's because we have taught them that they've got to stand in their own strength. You've got to, you know, you're the only one that can, can make your way and you've got to fight for what you want and here's the thing is it's I want to teach my children it's not who you think you are it's who you know your God to be so it's okay if you fail baby because guess who's got your back like you know what I mean like he's the one that's living like here for you and so the thing is is I'm all for empowering my kids I'm I'm all for empowering my daughter like you don't need no man especially not for a while but at the, but at the same, same time, I feel like we've sold 
this lie to our friends and our families. We have people all around us on a day-to-day basis who we're saying that we're Christians. And we're saying like, honey, you just put your trust in the Lord like when they're going through a hard time. But then every time they see something happen to you, what do they see you do? And maybe it's just me, but they see me panic and stressed out and call everybody but the Lord. They see me post it on Facebook or grab and complain or freak out and go off on my husband. They don't. But do they see me on my face crying out and putting my trust in him? You know, there's a really funny AT&T commercial. Have you seen the new AT&T commercials? It's like their slogan is when just okay is not okay. Like, I love those commercials. And it's so funny because it's like the doctor comes in the room, and he's been on probation for a while. Have anybody else seen these commercials? Okay, thank you, like two of you. So the doctor comes in the, ro- the, doctor comes in the room, and he's like been on probation because he did something wrong, and the, the patient's laying in the bed. And he's like, okay, are you nervous? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, me too. We'll see you in there. And like, then it's like, boom, when just okay is not okay. And then there's another one where a mom and a little boy, they're in like the Ferris, like a a fair, and they're getting in a ride. And she's like buckling up. Well, is this ride safe? And the guy's like, yeah, I put it together myself last night. Uh, It should be fine. And they're like unbuckling and like getting out of the car. Well, that's what we've done. Like, oh, well, Christianity, like, I mean, sometimes God comes through for me. Like this Christianity thing, it's just okay. And the people around you are like, we're not looking for just okay. They need somebody to radically change their lives. They need the God, from the, the God from the Bible, the one that raised Lazarus from the dead, and Jesus, the one that healed the sick and the blind could see. Like, that's the Jesus that they're looking for. That's the one that they need to see, and they need to see it through you. And we are paralyzed with fear like I've been for 15 years because the enemy's been coming with me, at me with so many lies. So the next time, here's what we're going to do today. Here's what I feel like the Lord was showing me when I'm getting ready for this sermon. We have, I could preach an entire thing on the armor of God, but we're not going to do that today. But you've got your little bitty shield of faith. Some of you have been coming to church. You've been in church year after year after year. I was raised there every single day of the week. My mama uh, even cleaned the church. So we were there Saturday, Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday, you know that. Revivals that went on for months at a time. And you got your little bitty shield of faith. And you've been trying to hold it up. And you've been hiding behind it. And all the fiery darts of the enemy have been coming at you. And you're holding that up with all you've got. And you look to your right. And you look to your left. And your friends and your family, they are just getting devoured. They are getting just completely just killed and attacked. And they're bruised and they're bloody. And you have nothing. You reach for your sword. And there's, there's nothing there. It's empty. There's no sword. There's no fight back. Because what is your sword? It's the word of God. It's truth. It's the sword of truth. And that's what we need to be fighting our enemy with instead of hiding behind our, our shield. Faith is good, but you need to fight back. So whenever he starts coming at you with these lies, here's what it says. Let me tell you truth. Let me tell you how you get your sword back. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. And then there's Psalms 28 and 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with a song I praise him. See, that is what we got to start to get back. So I'm going to move along because I got four, and that was only the first one. Number two, the second lie, is I'm never going to be able to get past my past. Or I'm too broken and damaged to be used by God. Listen, if anybody believed this lie, it's me. Mike gave you like a tiny snippet of my past, but when I say I'm jacked up, I'm all kinds of jacked up. I, uh, you talk about emotional, physical, sexual abuse all growing up. And then as the teenage years happened, like everything just got harder. And then I lost my mom tragically and unexpectedly. I was broken from head to toe. And I'm not going to give you my whole story because we'll be here till Father's Day. But I was, everything in my body was broken. I didn't want to live. You're 17 years old. You have your whole life ahead of you. You're about to graduate high school. And you have all these plans. And then all of a sudden, who's going to ever love somebody that can never walk again? They told me my arm would never, would never be able to use my arm Or do anything for myself again. And I thought I'll never have a family. They told me I would never have children. Listen to me. Lie after lie after lie was spoken over my life. You will be worth nothing. You will lay in this bed the rest of your days. I tried to kill myself one night and pull my vent tube out. 
I'm not going to get emotional. But the thing is, so many lies were spoke over my life. I thought I would never get past my past. But let me tell you, we serve a God who redeems. And I have an amazing husband. And I have beautiful children that I carried myself and had myself. And I have the most beautiful life. And God can do all of that. Listen to me. This is the same God that that healed me. He's the same one that took a shepherd and turned him into a king. He's the same one. Have you ever read your Bible? Open the scriptures. He turned a murderer into a minister. He's the same one that took fishermen and turned him into followers. Nothing against fishermen. They're amazing. My husband's a fisherman. But he took just the average fisherman. He turned him into followers and his best friends. And he can do it for you. And you may be sitting there, but Stephanie, you don't understand. Like, I've done this and I've done this and I've done this. Or this has been done to me and this has been done to me. Listen, it does not matter. He is a professional at this, you guys. This is what he does. It's what he's known for. My son has been struggling for a very long time with a medical issue, and we've been waiting for months to get to a specialist. Listen to me. I'm not going to just take him to anybody. I have waited for the best of the best. I want the guy who is known for this surgery. I want the one that does it every day, all day for the past 35 years. That's who I want. Guess what? Your God, he's a professional at this. He takes, he makes beauty from ashes. He's the one that brings life from death. He's done it over and over and over. And why do you think that he can't do it for you? Because somebody's been lying to you. That's why. So let's look. At the truth. Everybody get your swords out because here we go. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. Everybody say the new is here. Okay, there you go. It doesn't matter what happened last week, last month, last year when you were a child. The new is here if you're in Christ Jesus. And this one's my favorite. If you do not get, if you don't hear anything I say all day. You're just thinking about that yummy meal you're about to eat when you leave here. I want you to hear this. Psalms 103, 8 through 12. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. He is slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. Praise the Lord. Or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. I don't know about you, but that makes me excited. Because I've got some transgressions, and I've got some iniquities, and I've got some junk that I need to him to completely forget. And your enemy, and maybe even yourself, he wants to throw All of that back in your face on a daily basis. Okay, you see what God has for you, but look at this. But look what you've been through. But look at all the things that were spoken of your life. No, no, no. You say, my God, he doesn't remember that. And it's Satan, you might remember it, and I might remember it. But he does not, and it is gone in Jesus' name. So I need you to stop acting like a victim. I've done it for a long time. It's time for us to stop walking around acting like a victim because you are victorious through Jesus Christ. You need to stop acting like you're a child in the foster care system. Because listen to me, you have been adopted. So everything that's his is now yours. You have rights. And your daddy is the king of all kings. Like he's got it all. And so you're in that family now. You have that identity. And it doesn't matter what your real life daddy did to you. It matters of who he is. I didn't have a dad that was ever there for me, ever. I felt abandoned all the time. And when my mom died, I was an orphan of the state. But listen to me. I'm not an orphan because I've been adopted by the best daddy. So we just need to get over ourselves. Everybody say, get over yourself. That's right. Get over yourself. God's got plans for you. So moving along to the third lie is the lie of comparison or the lie of I'm going to be happy when. And I feel like Satan has a really big helpmate in this, which is the internet and social media nowadays, especially for us mamas or us younger ladies. Literally in five minutes the other day, as I'm scrolling through some stories, by the time I got done, I thought, 
I really need to lose some weight. I could really be more tan. I need to get my teeth whitened. Those false eyelashes would really probably help me out. I could really dress more trendy. My kids could eat healthier. Like, I should be PTO president. You know what? Our city's kind of going to crud. Maybe I should be in politics. Like, you guys, I had myself so busy, and it was five minutes, and I had so much to do. I was freaking out, and I felt like a failure. You guys are being beat up with the lie of comparison. You're taking a snippet of a little bitty picture that somebody posts, and then you're taking all of it from everybody and thinking you have to be all of those women, all of those things, whenever you don't. Because here's the thing. I almost killed myself. This is a funny story. I was asking my son if he remembers this. I was so beat up with the lie of comparison because since God had gotten me so far, since he had brought me from such mess and given me this amazing husband and these amazing children, I thought that I had to be perfect. You guys, when I'm saying I swept and mopped three times a day, am I lying? I'm not lying. I killed myself. My house had to be spotless. Dinner had to be ready. And whenever he walked in the door, like, and that was not because of him. That was because that's pressure I put on myself. I thought that my kids had to be like the best dressed. They had to act the best. Like everything had to be amazing. I kept a daycare at my house. I kept eight kids every day. I had a kid in kindergarten. I had one that was like two and a half. And here I was killing myself every single day. I would gather all the children up. We would all go to all the things because I was at every single event that the school ever had. And so I showed up. I'll never forget his Jude's Thanksgiving feast. You guys, it's etched into my brain for all eternity. I had got on Pinterest. Don't do it. Don't do it. I had got on Pinterest, and I thought that he needed all the things. This was going to be the most epic Thanksgiving feast you have ever seen in your life. Matt got roped into it, you guys. For three nights, I didn't sleep. I stayed up. Everybody had their own turkey for the centerpiece of their table. And it was decorated with, like, crayons were hot glued. My fingers were blistered. Everything was a mess. I had homemade everything. And then I ended up getting a life-size teepee. We made a life-size teepee and put all the little drawings on it. It had to look legit. And then we get there. I have them all in matching vests. Do you remember this? I have them all in matching vests, and they all have their little headbands on that I'd made with the feathers. They all look like they were seriously Native American. They looked amazing. And so we're getting all the pictures. I'm exhausted. I hated every second of it. All the other moms are sitting there enjoying their dinner with their kid, and I'm running around like a hot mess. And I don't even remember spending one minute with him at that party. I killed myself for seven years. Listen, let me just give you a little piece of advice. If anybody in here has children five or under, listen to me. Stop trying so hard. They don't remember it. Okay? (laughs) You need to save up all that amazingness till they about seven. Okay? Because that's when they start remembering. And that was the time when I was wore out. They remember the mama that's like, you know what? Just, uh uh-uh. Let's just go get a rotisserie chicken. I'm going to send that with you. Like, they remember that mom. And I'm like, look what I did for you back then. So stop trying so hard. Because let me tell you what they need. They don't need you well-dressed. They don't need you to be able to really get that smoky eye, girl. Like, they don't need that. I'm going to tell you what they need. They need you to be drenched in Jesus. And I don't mean sprinkled or splashed. I mean you can tell that you have been submerged and come back up. Because whenever your children, your family, your friends, your coworkers, the people that you have influence at on a day-to-day basis, when they're at their lowest, they're going to look for you. They're going to look for the ones that say that they have trust in God and that they're a Christian. They're going to come to you when they're at their lowest point. Mark my words. And they're going to need somebody. They're not going to care what you're wearing. And they're not going to care if you make the best, like, TP. They don't care about any of that. They're going to care. Can she walk into the room and the atmosphere begins to change? Can she walk over and she can pray for me and peace washes over me like I've never felt? Things begin to change and lives begin to be healed. That's what they need. They need somebody completely drenched in Jesus. So everybody say, I want to get drenched. Yeah, I didn't believe any of y'all, but okay. So if you look, whenever he comes at you with the lie of having to be perfect, here's what you fight back with. Everybody grab your sword again. 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, 
they are not wise. If you go over and look in Galatians 1 and 10, here's some more fountain words. I am, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Ouch, that one hurts. Like if we're trying to please people, it plain and simple says you're not a servant of Christ. And then Romans 12 and 2, I'm sure you've all heard this one. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So my fourth and final is a biggie, at least to me. It's the lie that God is not entirely good. And I brought my tissues for this one. Okay, making sure they're still here. We say it all the time. Listen, I can prove it to you right now. God is good. And all the time. You see, y'all got that down. We say it all the time. We sing it. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Okay, you're singing it. But are you believing it? Because, listen, when you've battled infertility for 10 years and you've had four miscarriages, where's the goodness of God? Is he still good? Is he still good when you lose a child or a loved one that's way too young and you feel like it wasn't their time to go? Like, where's his goodness? Have you ever questioned it or is it just me? Have you questioned if he's really good? What about if you have work so hard for a degree and then you graduate and there's no jobs in your field and you can't provide for your family. We've been there. Matt worked at a smoothie bar for like two years with a master's degree. Where is his, where is God's goodness? What about if your spouse leaves you and you've got the kids by yourself and you don't know what to do? Or what about that cancer diagnosis? And the outcome doesn't look good. And you're afraid that the chemo is going to kill you before the cancer does. Where is God's goodness in all of this? Losing your mom and being alone. Sometimes it's easy to feel like he's not good. But let me tell you, you want to know truth? Yes. Yes, he's good. The truth is that we all go through crud. Can I say crud? We all go through crud. Because we live in a fallen world. Okay? That's because of sin is why we are going through what we're going through. It's not because of your God. I, this reminded me of a kind of a funny story as I'm preparing for this. Follow me here. It's about my daughter, Izzy. And the thing is, is, um, we have this dog, you guys, every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. That dog is like, oh my gosh, that dog is amazing. And she would never hurt you on purpose. She would never bite anybody on purpose, but she gets super excited about her squeaky toys. Okay, you get to squeak in that toy and she's going to try to jump and grab it. So Izzy is laying on the bed and she's squeaking that squeaky toy right by her face. And I kindly said, Isabella, you might want to move that squeaky toy because Finn's about to get you. And I'm afraid she's going to accidentally bat your face. All you mamas in the house. Guess what happened? Not two minutes later. You know it. Yes. She didn't move the squeaky toy and the dog reached up. And whenever she snapped for the toy. Her tooth accidentally got right under Izzy's eye, and it was a good one. It swelled up real big, immediately was real red and bleeding, and Izzy is so mad. She is screaming and yelling, and she is angry that she just got bit under her eye, but she is not screaming at that dog. Do you know who she's screaming at? Me. Yes, thank you. Hey, but she is screaming at me. I mean yelling at me. She threw a wall-eyed hissy fit. She screamed in my face, run into my room, slammed my door, and locked it. Locked me out of my room. I said, dear Jesus. I stood in front of that door, and I said, Lord, you are going to have to give me strength before I back- backhand a child. And so I calmly asked her to come and unlock the door. And she came and unlocked it. And I, looked, I stormed in that room, and I looked at her, and I said, what is wrong with you? I didn't bite you. I did not bite you in the face. I'm not the one that came and bit you in the face. And the Lord brought this to my remembrance when I was going over this one. And he's like, that is what I'm like. I'm looking at y'all and he's saying, I didn't bite you in the face. I told you to move the stinking stink, (laughs) the squeaky toy away from your cheek. And I brought you a cold compress to put on it after you got bit. He didn't bite you in the face. He's not the one that did it. Maybe what you've been sowing, maybe now you're having to reap. Maybe sin 
from earlier is coming back and it's biting you in the face. Maybe your situation or your circumstance is coming back and it has bitten you in the face. Maybe it's just because, maybe you did nothing to deserve it. And it's just because this world stinks and you got bit in the face. But your God is up there and he's like, baby, I didn't bite you in the face. Stop getting so mad at me. I'm here for you. Now take this cold rag and put it on your eye and hush up. That's what I told her. (laughs) So if you look, so let's look, pull out your swords again. Because in 1 Chronicles 16 and 34, it says, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. And then in Psalms 34 and 8, It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. And here's my favorite. If you think that the Lord is not good or you've ever questioned it, I want you to go to Romans 8 and 32. Because I'm going to tell you what. I love my children more than anything in this world. And I don't care how much I love any of the rest of you guys. I would never sacrifice them for anybody. But it says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, not just me, for every single one of you in here, all of your friends, loved ones, I don't care what they did, he gave him up for them too. Gave him up for us all, how will he not also graciously give us all things? So I asked God, like, okay, God, I know you're good, and I I know your truth, and Many of you here have heard some of these scriptures over and over. Maybe you, you probably all know the Bible way more than I do. I'm going to be honest. But I ask God, so why do we stink and keep falling for the lies? Why do we keep believing? Like eventually if a liar keeps coming and lying and lying and lying to me and I find him out, are you going to keep believing the next time he comes? Like eventually you would think I would wake up and stop believing the lies of the enemy. And y'all, I'm not kidding you. This is what I heard back. You're believing him because you've been become more accustomed to his voice than you have mine. That hurt. I don't know about you, but that hurt. And here's why. You're not going to miss your favorite show that comes on Thursday night. We're not going to miss your son's baseball game or soccer game, your daughter's soccer game. I would move hell, heaven, and earth. I'd move it all to get to their games because I love them, and that is a priority in our life. We do not miss practice. You do not miss games. And it's all about priorities. I'm a type 1 diabetic. I carry my insulin with me at all times. It's right there in my purse because I know that it is vital to my existence. I have to give myself insulin shots or I do not survive. But yet the word of God That alarm goes off so I can get up 15 minutes early and look at it. Snooze. I can be late to church on Sundays. I can decide to go to the lake instead. All of these things can come before him. And we do not like to say that spending time with God is not a priority. Listen, we say we're too busy. The Lord understands. Here's the thing. Instead of saying I'm too busy, why don't you say that's just not a priority right now? Because I'm telling you, if it's a priority, you find time to do it. You just do. So what do we do today? Like, I want to leave you guys with, I can't learn the Bible overnight. Like, what if I don't know all the scriptures and the truth right now to fight back? It's kind of like me. It's going to take a while. It's like the Proverbs 31 woman. She didn't get there overnight. It's a process, I feel like. All she was was drenched in Jesus and sick in love with him. And all we need is the Holy Spirit. Because look at John 16 and 13. Before you get all the scripture and you don't have to have it all memorized today, you can still start to fight his lies because John 16 and 13. But when he, speaking of the Holy Spirit, but when he, the spirit of truth, hello, his name is truth. The spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, only what he hears, and he will tell you what is to come. So, listen, I think a little differently than everybody else, but to me, the Holy Spirit really sounds like a really good version of Google Maps. I mean, who's with me, okay? I cannot, we live right outside of Dallas. Lord, help us all. My husband drives in the traffic every day. I am so directionally challenged, it's not funny. If you ask Matt, don't talk to me in northeast, west, south, 
however those go in order. Don't talk to me like that. I literally need you to be like, okay, baby, here's what we're going to do. In 0.5 miles, you're going to want to start getting over into the right lane because in 0.2 miles, you're going to take exit number 47 on your right. And then when I miss that exit, because I will, even though you told me all that, I need it to say rerouting, rerouting, and then be like, okay, honey, in a minute, you're going to make a U-turn and go back. That's what I need, and that's what the Holy Spirit does. If we will be so in tune to his voice, he's going to be like, you know what? In a minute, you're going to need to get over because there's something coming up here on the right that I have for you. And I need you to be able to exit and get to it. And if you miss it, it's okay. Because he's going to make a way for you to get back to it. That's what he does. So we just need to be so filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen, I may have had a really rough childhood. Don't be feeling sorry for me. Listen, there was some mess. And if you think yours is worse, we have to talk. Like if your childhood was worse than mine, come and let's talk after service. Because we're going to make each other feel real good about ourselves. But here's the thing is that, sorry, I'm getting dry mouth. One second. Okay, I may have had a rough childhood, but here's what I had. I had two grandmamas. If you're a grandmother in the house, I want you to listen. Just because maybe right now everything looks a mess. Maybe your family that you've been praying for forever, maybe they're not living for the Lord. Maybe they've gone away for a while and you've been praying and praying and praying for your loved ones for so long. Listen to me. Listen to me. It makes a difference. Those prayers will outlive you. Okay, God's not, he is not a God that time affects him. Those prayers are going to go on for all of eternity. My grandmama's prayers, she went home to be with the Lord on grandparents' day. And her prayers still are affecting my life. Those prayers that she prayed for me, because let me tell you, when all I had was my shield, and it was a little bitty one, and it wasn't doing very good, she had her sword. And she was out in front of me, and she was fighting Satan with everything that she had. And she would open the Bible, and she would lay it to scriptures of healing, and she would lay it on me, and she would proclaim his love and his goodness and his word over my life. And that is why I'm here today. That is why I'm here today, where because of her prayers. Listen, I was fully convinced. My sisters, if they watch this back on Facebook Live, listen, they can attest to this. I have two sisters, amazing sisters, and here's what happened. We fully thought that Satan lived under my grandmama's kitchen. Okay, hell was under her kitchen because let me tell you, anytime she was in there cooking, y'all, she was stomping him into the ground. She would sing, he's under my feet, he's under my feet. And she would stomp him and stomp him and stomp him that I didn't even want to go in that kitchen because I just knew Satan was under that floor. And guess what, though? I was not scared of him. Do you know why I wasn't scared of him? Because my nanny had him in his place. Listen, I, he, he was not coming up out of that floor because she's going to stomp him all day long. And that is what we need. Let's get our fight back. Satan is not scared of you. He's not scared of you when you're in the corner and you're crouched down and you're hiding and just praying, oh, Lord, come quickly. Look at this world. He is not scared of you. Your friends are dying. Your family is dying. Your loved ones are dying. Your coworkers are dying. And they're going to hell. And get this. The truth is, is they need you to fight. And how are you going to fight for them without your sword? And so I challenge you today, and I challenge myself today. I feel like the Holy Spirit is challenging us to rise up and get our fight back. Learn the word of God. Hide it in your heart like we've been talked about since we were babies. And really fight back against the enemy. So here's what it is. Here's it. Everybody grab your sword one more time. Because we're going to start swinging. Okay? You're going to start swinging, baby. You hit whatever you can hit. Because the next time he comes for you, and this is how I'm closing. Sorry, Mike. I'm going to try to hurry up and close it up. This is what you do. When he tells you how useless you are and how your situation is hopeless, when, when he says it is what it is, you are ugly, you're a failure, this disease is going to kill you, I want you to say this back. You say, I'm alive in Christ Jesus. I am a new creation. Greater is he who's in me than he that is in the world. It is not I who lives, but Christ who lives within me. I am greatly loved by God. I can do all things through Christ. I am more than a conqueror. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I win. You lose, dang devil. And if you read Revelation, you end up in a lake of fire. So you tell him that. And if you still need more ammo, there are 60 six books of it so you guys i would like you to get your fight back and start fighting for your family and your friends and your loved ones this morning thank you so much for having me amen amen how many of you 
were encouraged this morning. Amen. There's nothing better than the Word of God to encourage you. You know, the devil, like she says, she says, he lies to you. He lies to you. Some of you this morning, you may still be believing some of those lies, but I hope that through this moment, through this time, as she brought this word to us, that the, the Word of God began to illuminate in your heart and in your spirit, and you begin to realize that He is the liar that, that we know Him as, and He has no power and no control over you. And it's by His might. Not your might, that, that we can do this, and we trust the Lord to do this, and we give it over to God to overcome these situations. And so this morning, would you just stand with me this morning? Right there where you're at, whether, whether you come today and you're good and everything's perfect in your life, and Mother's Day.